Let's see. We have a question from Levi on losing your vision when eating junk food. Recently, a story has been circulating about a teen losing his vision from a junk food diet. Namely, he was eating a predominantly carbohydrate diet full of chips, fries, bread, and cold cuts. Since hearing this, I've been curious. Is this actually possible to lose your vision or suffer other ailments from a junk junk food-laden diet? What happens if someone goes on an almost, I'm assuming he means almost all carb diet, because it just says an almost carb diet. I would love your input. Yeah. I mean, it's so, gosh, a lot of different things that I'm, I'm thinking about here. But if we just look at the situation that people face in developing countries, particularly if there's like a, a natural disaster and people don't have access to their more traditional foods and they just get a bunch of like corn or rice distributed to them. These people can end up in nutrient deficiencies and blindness due to a lack of adequate vitamin A is still a global problem, like a significant global problem. There were some genetic engineering attempts around creating, uh, I think it's called a golden rice, which is a type of rice that has a little bit of an orange hue to it, uh, which contains beta carotene. And that uh, the Weston A. Price folks will freak out. They're like, beta carotene doesn't convert perfectly. And no, it doesn't. But it also is enough to prevent blindness in these people. So this is where, like, good enough may be, it, in fact, good enough. But, yeah, if you sufficiently strip the nutrients out of a diet, this is kind of the inevitable result that we see. And there's some really interesting stuff around this. Uh, you know, within, say, like the carnivore diet, in theory, people should be developing scurvy and a bunch of other nutrient deficiencies. But if we reduce carbohydrate intake, we reduce the, the need, it, it would appear, for vitamin C. And vitamin C mm -hmm. tends to compete with uh, uh, the receptor site, seems to uh, be kind of competed with um, glucose. And so high glucose levels are going to necessitate a, uh, an inherently high le higher level of vitamin C. And you, you find some just fascinating historical accounts where uh, mid-Victorian navies were either doing really well from a health standpoint with their, their sailors or crippled because they had too little protein in it and, and too little, uh, basically, uh, uh, well, usually they, they, when they put this stuff together, they linked it back to protein because protein tends to be the most nutrient-dense uh, uh, you know, kind of food products that we can eat. But this was a really common feature of, um, you know, these early mid-Victorian navies and uh, Japan being one of the primary examples. And they actually did research with some European navies and looked at the dietary composition of those folks who were not suffering the nutrient deficiencies mm -hmm. that were found in the, the Japanese navy. So we wrote that up in, I, I think, the Carnivore 101 thing that mm -hmm. we have. We have some have that somewhere where we could put some links in the show notes. But... Yeah, I mean, it, 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 we, it, it's interesting. The 20th century was really a story of trying to prevent nutrient deficiencies. So things like goiter uh, from, from low iodine and uh, berberine and all kinds, you know, B vitamin deficiencies. We largely kind of fixed that. Some of the solutions were good. Some of them were kind of knuckleheaded. But we've gotten to a point where enough people eat sufficiently nutrient denuded food because I don't know how, I, I guess you could sprinkle B vitamins on like potato chips or something, but I, you know, like that's probably going to negatively impact the flavor. And so the, the brands that don't add it are, are going to, sell more. You, you know, sell more and all that type of stuff. But yeah, you can definitely get yourself into a spot from eating a super, processed diet where a whole host of nutrient deficiencies pop up. And I mean, a, a kid in the developed world going blind, that was just unheard of. Like you had to really be in some austere environments for that type of nutrient deficiency to historically occur. And now this is becoming somewhat commonplace. And I, I like the WebMD um, line. It's teen's fussy diet leaves him blind. And Fussy junk food diet. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm, for whatever reason, it's making me think of the uh, comment stream on one of Diana Rogers at Sustainable Dish on Instagram, uh, one of her recent posts where oh, somebody was eating her a lot, or a whole lot of people were chewing her out for suggesting that um, Pop-Tarts 
or well, she 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 makes the case that you know removing meat from the diet, especially from schools and in all these places, it's it, you're it's one place where a lot of people who don't have a lot of access to high nutrient quality foods, that's the one place they get it. And if they're not getting it in school, then they're, they're, they're getting not, it nowhere. They're getting it nowhere. Yeah. And, um, God, people ate her alive. They were, you're, you're just speaking from privilege. You're elitist. And you're elitist. And it's like, no, the, <laughs> I'm making the point that these people, you know, everybody needs access to this. And if we take it away from the one place where a lot of these children, it's the only meat that they get in their day, you know, and, and this is where this whole like kind of climate change plus uh, meat policy is really kind of going to crazy land in a lot of ways because Diana has made the case and we make the case in the, the book that's due out next year, Sacred Cow. Um, the people that are going to be most negatively affected by this are the poor and the mi- poor minorities, uh, just disproportionately because... These are folks that in many circumstances, these kids, the only meal they get, the only one is the school lunch program. And now there's this huge movement to remove all animal products out of the school lunch. And part of my cynical side is just kind of like, fuck it, bring that on, let it go, because it is going to so catastrophically affect the health of a generation of kids that this vegan question is going to be put the fuck to bed, but there's going to be millions of kids damaged in this process. But part of me is kind of like going to make an omelet, got to break some eggs. These motherfuckers want to, to push this agenda. Cool. Okay. Let's just let them go. And then this, this is going to be stuff that you just Walter Willett and all these other assholes will not be able to hide this stuff because there will be so many people so sick and so negatively affected and it, it, as it is, our meat consumption has been decreasing mm-hmm. over time, yet all of our health problems get worse, you know? And so on the one hand, I kind of feel like it's our obligation to go in and try to fight against this stuff. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, we could be 10 years away from like the vegan plague being done because we have a, a, kids grow fast. And so you see nutrient deficiencies mm-hmm. super quick in kids. And this is going to be something that we will not, cannot be hidden within the, the janky nutritional research scene. And I'm sure that they'll spin it in some sort of asinine mm-hmm. way, but my cynical side is kind of like, fuck it, mm-hmm. let them do it and let's see what happens. But but it's tragic. I mean, it's, it's tragic. It's, I mean, it's already happened. I mean, what happened to this kid is yeah. tragic. Uh, the, uh, just on the B vitamin side, like B12 deficiency, these kids will not develop neurologically the way that they should. They will be dumber. They will be less less uh, uh, able to do any one of a number of things, and they will be hamstrung the rest of their lives because. And of what these is the cost policies. of society? And what is the cost of society that? around that? Yeah, and this is part of the reason why we're kind of hair on fire about this stuff because it really fucking matters, and it's a complex topic, and it's really difficult to unpack. And the vegans have kind of an asymmetric warfare where. They just stand on the other side of the fence and throw a grenade over and it's basically like meat causes cancer and they go running mm-hmm. and then we're left to pick up the aftermath. Mm-hmm. And then any uh, killing is inhumane. And, <laughs> you know, and you know, the big push right now is to just moderate meat consumption. Whenever I hear someone say, well, you, uh, we, we just need moderate. What was the, uh, um, Chris Weaver's deal. Oh, um, everything uh, in moderation. Everything in moderation. Yeah. That is just like the most bullshit position to, to throw out there. What does moderation even mean? Like there's no quantifier to that. There's no benchmark for where you're assessing things. And in an environment where we have an example like this. We'll just where, have a little chips and a little fries and a little bread and a little moderate. pop tart. And, totally and just moderate. a half of a pop tart. Yeah. And he <laughs> moderated himself into blindness, which I, I don't know if it, it, it's reversible or, or he, it's permanent. But these kids that end up B vitamin deficient uh, through their formative process, there is no bringing them back. They're, they're going to be broken the rest of their lives. So, yeah, man. And it's a, it's a not popular uh, position. We get in trouble with uh, the Googles and the Facebooks because uh, these things are seen to be not scientific, promoting anything like an ancestral type diet. It's... Uh, uh, God, all kinds of other nomenclature gets applied to like the the um, the sustainability features of this story. But I'm 
I've never been good at shutting my mouth and keeping my head down in the past. So I'll, I'll, no. it's unlikely I will do that in this case. But for the folks listening, like this is the fight that we have. And it, it's unfortunate. But I think at the end of the day, we're not really in a position of uh, kind of winning hearts and minds on the other side of this thing. Like we're basically we need to get the people that are into this stuff to organize and rally because the vegans are really good at doing that. And we so far have not been. And if you want to make, if you have an autoimmune condition and you want access to the food that you need to eat to deal with your autoimmune condition, you need to think about what the overall kind of social political platforms are that you're, you're kind of supporting. So man, that was a long fucking That's digression long. into that, but yeah. yeah. I'm sure we'll be talking about that more as we get closer to the re release of Sacred Cow. Yes. Yep. Yes. Which we've already had death threats around that. So yeah. that's a good time. Yeah. <laughs>